So in my last video, I was telling you guys I'm going to redo a bunch of wiring on this car from scratch to get it to run, get power, ground, and show you guys how I do it. So essentially, I have a kill switch on the back, which some of you guys will will have or won't have. Now, right now, I have my four gauge all around for the ground and power um, for the main components. This is not for my fuse panel. That'll be part two of this series. I have four gauge wire and I have a mega fuse that's fusing everything from the starter uh, and right now the alternator is not wired but the alternator will be wired to that mega fuse. So whenever you're cranking, especially if you read a battery, you show like cold cranking amps, sometimes they say like 400 to 500, it can run 400 to 500 cranking amps. If it sees that, it's obviously going to blow a 150 amp fuse. First step, I need to get this car jacked back up so I can get underneath the car and show you guys what I'm working with. These are temporary wheels and tires. These tires don't hold air very well, so you gotta air this up more so you can even fit the jack underneath the car. Just for reference, so here is my power wire and it runs to a 150 amp mega fuse. This one is blown, I have others, but this is just to show you guys kind of how I have it routed right now. So it's going to this fuse and then it goes straight to the kill switch. It goes to that top post on my kill switch. And then this bottom wire goes back up and it runs through the trunk into the car. You can barely see it. I have a lot of junk in here. But it runs into a bulkhead right there. Off that bulkhead, we have it wired to my starter. And that is for my power at, at the moment. First step I'm going to do. Is I'm just gonna do this short lead right here that goes straight to that mega fuse. I'm gonna reuse my battery terminal. So just like that. And do this. We're gonna replace that with a one gauge. This is four gauge. Just for reference, that's the size difference. So for the part that goes to this terminal, I'm just gonna use this terminal end and kind of line it up a little bit to see where I'm gonna cut this sleeve off. And we went right about there, right at the beginning of where the U is, where it says USA. I'm gonna peel that off. I'm just gonna use a box cutter or a razor blade. Peel that off so we can crimp it. I'll also slid on my heat shrink. I already cut it. I don't cut it too far in where I hit that copper. Just barely cut it and you should be able to kind of bend it around and slide that end off. Just like that. It's about how you want it. I got these crimpers. I think I got them on Amazon. They weren't that expensive, but you're going to need a decent set of crimpers to crimp on these bigger terminals. Not those little uh, crimpers for like 14 to 8 gauge wire. You need some big heavy duty terminal end crimpers. So you can either use like a heat gun or I am lazy and I just use a little mini torch. I keep it far enough away but I just use one of these little mini torches. You can get on the Harbor Freight really anywhere. Amazon uh, just takes butane but there it is with the heat shrink on and that is how you kind of want these ends to look. Um, this wire I'm not going to run this sleeve just because I want, want it to be obvious. I mean, I'm, I know you should know where your positive and negative is, but I want to show that this is red wire, this is my positive wire coming out of the battery box into here. Everything else running under the car or through the car is going to run this protective sleeve just to help protect it from getting nicked, and we don't want any 
any arcing going on. I will run after I put the sleeve on, then I'll put the heat shrink over the sleeve. It helps hold the sleeve on at the end, and you can clearly tell that that is a positive wire. There's one wire, just like that, straight to the front part of the fuse. Okay. This wire is taken out. I'm going to run the wire, my power wire, to the top of the kill switch. This can be the main power of the kill switch. Now really quick, I'm going to show you guys. I have this wire loom that I'm putting over this one gauge wire and this is actually for, I think this is like for three eighths th like diameter and this is closer to a half inch. But I want it to be a tight fit. I don't want it too loose. So this is actually working good. I did buy the half inch. This is left over from the four gauge wire I was using. This is working pretty good. And how you get this on is it's kind of like, you know those Chinese handcuffs where you put your fingers in and when you pull, it locks in place. That's kind of how you have to put it on. You can't snake the wire in because it grabs. So what you have to do is you take a little bit of this and it, it'll, it'll puff that up and you take it and you slide that down. You keep doing that until it's all the way at the end of the wire. This wire is made. So I actually wrap around heat shrink and the Alex Tech loom with some of this uh, Tessa tape. It's like terminal tape or whatever. It's like almost a felt material. I think it looks decent. It's better than like electrical tape. It looks a little bit cleaner. And I also noticed that if you use the smaller diameter loom, you can kind of see through it better and see that this, you know, you can kind of, I don't know if you can pick it up on camera, but you can kind of see that it's still a little red, which is nice because I want to be able to differentiate. I mean, obviously I will know, but it, it just looks cleaner. This is your red, that's your power. Okay, I got that red wire pulled from the bulkhead that led originally to the starter. I'm going to reuse the four gauge, only one four gauge wire for just the alternator. I feel like that should be fine for just the alternator. Um, and that will still actually be fused. So that's gonna run through this hole I just drilled right there above the bulkhead. It's gonna run directly there into this bottom load on the alternator. Now I do have a cheat sheet I drew up. This is essentially what I'm going to be doing. It's hard to see. So there's my battery. One gauge goes to the front of the fuse. And off that front of the fuse, it's also gonna go to the starter. That way the starter is not fused. It's just off that one gauge wire. Other side of the fuse is one gauge to the switch. And then also to that first terminal on the switch, it's gonna go to an alternator. Sorry guys, this is not the best depiction. To the alternator, just off a of four gauge because it should be fine for just an alternator. Okay, other side of the switch. This is everything that's gonna be essentially off the switch is gonna be to a fuse box and then that's gonna run everything else, all my accessories and everything. So, yeah, I'm hoping that should be all right. All right, it's actually a few days later I ran out of material, I actually ran out of wire, so I had to order more wire, it's the next weekend. Head back over there, I'm gonna finish the power wires and then I'm gonna go ahead and replace the ground wires. I am starting on the ground wires, I already made one. This went to the back of the block, right where that hole is, and I drilled out one of my lugs just a little bit because the bolt I am using is a little bit bigger than a 3 8 bolt. Here's the ground wire. This is gonna go from, right there is the bulkhead, and it's gonna run right there to the back of the block. That ground cable is made up, it's on there. Now I'm gonna show you guys essentially all the grounds I have, my engine ground, chassis ground. Here's my ground cable from the negative on the battery terminal. Goes underneath, th through the trunk floor, goes over this little cross member. Okay. 
screen goes right there. That stud I have welded to the frame. So now I have a lead that goes all the way to the front of the car. Actually, it just goes underneath right here. Up over the pumpkin. Goes underneath the passenger side. And right there, I have a stud on the front of the chassis. And from that stud, it goes up to that bulkhead that I showed you earlier. And off of that bulkhead, it right, goes to the engine. So that way it's an engine ground, two chassis grounds. I feel like you can't have too many grounds. Where that red terminal is, it goes to the starter. Made that, and that just goes off that red bulkhead I showed you. So all this, all this wiring is done for the main wiring. Now all I have to do is run from the back up to here, another one gauge to power my fuse and relay panel. And that'll be in the next video. And just to show you really quick what it's gonna be mounted on, here's some bus bars, some lugs. Bought a piece of like quarter inch thick ABS plastic sheet. It's gonna be mounted to this board and up underneath the passenger side. So yeah, that's uh, basically it for, for the positive and negative. I redid all that stuff. Hopefully everything's all good to go. I'm gonna wire up my fuse panel next. I got a switchboard as well. I'm gonna run everything off switches, the fans, all that good stuff. Uh, and that'll be the next step. And then hopefully this car will be like, for the most part, 100% wired. If you're not subscribed already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can see the next part two of this video. So yeah, I appreciate it guys. Thanks for watching. Peace out.